So the Nash equilibrium exists where the both players charge low price because in this case, if A were to move on to high price, they would lose 10 compared to zero. B would go from making zero to also losing 10. So if they were in the low price quadrant, they would not move. And that is the definition of a Nash equilibrium. You might say, wait a minute, I see 10, 10 over there. Well, 10, 10 is not a Nash equilibrium because if B had chosen high price, then A would say, I think I'll go low price and make 50, which is better than 10. So that's an example where 10, 10 is not a Nash equilibrium, even though uh, both would like it because they both made 10. So the payoffs looking at the uh, alternatives to zero, zero are inferior from the firm standpoint because they agree. The only choice is if they both agree to ch charge high. So notice that we have a couple of illustrations here that zero, zero, the, the position where it's low, low for the two firms, they both make zero, even though they're eyeing that bottom right quadrant pretty longingly because they see in that case, it's 10, 10. So this is a dilemma, a dilemma where the Nash equilibrium is not at a mutually beneficial outcome. So let's try another example of the one shot game and that's advertising. We could also do this with relating to the quality of a particular product, but we'll do advertising. So A and B have choices. Should they advertise or not? So you see that there is a Nash equilibrium in this game. And that is the point where both firms advertise at four, four. Notice that if B chooses to advertise, and A chooses to advertise, it's at four. If A chooses not to, in that column, if you will, they will go from four to one. So that that's not something they do. Likewise, if A chose to advertise and B does advertise, if B then says, I, I'll not advertise, then they'll go from four to one. So that is meeting the test of the Nash equilibrium. However, they look longingly again at the bottom right-hand corner. How about 10, 10? We like 10, 10 better than four, four. And this is the opportunity for collusion, where if both would agree not to cheat and they both don't advertise, they would both make more money. We'll look again at the idea of cheating and reneging on agreements in collusion later on. But for now, we're looking at the equilibrium positions. The other application is on a coordination decision. Here's where firm A and B has different types of electrical voltages that they could work with. And if they both sell um, 120 volt outlets, they both make money. If they both do 90 volt, they both make money. However, anyone where one chooses one, the other chooses the other, it's zero. So in this case, they have a very clear objective that let's just agree on one. This is the idea of a coordination. So in this case, if the players choose 120, they're in good shape. If they both choose 90, they're okay. And there is a a way to make this happen. First, they could permit player communication. If competitors could coordinate on, say, specifications of the electrical gear, it would have been solved and no one's really harmed by it. It would just be a better outcome. The other is the government might see wasteful that there are different outlets in different buildings and different appliances, and they would make a mandatory the choice. And it could be 90 or 120. It almost doesn't matter. Just pick one, right? And so this is, we see this all the time because that's why we see 220 in some countries and 120 in others. All right, let's try a different scenario. Let's say it's about monitoring employees where the manager could choose to monitor or not to monitor. And the worker could choose to work hard or shirk their responsibility to work. Here, there is no Nash equilibrium. There's no position where either party can say that they can't better their sell themselves if they made a different choice. For example, if we're in this quadrant and the worker is going to work, the monitoring decision, hey, if they're going to work, I won't monitor and I'll make more money since I'm not having the cost of monitoring. In this scenario, the worker might say, oh, if I had known the manager is not going to monitor me, I won't be in this negative one position where I'm working. I would then choose to not work. I would shirk. In that case, I would make out. So you can see that for any of these quadrants, there is an advantage to one or the other party based on if that knowledge were, were had, that they would then act different. So how would you play this type of game? You would do what's called a mixed or randomized strategy so that you're not predictable. Because if you were predictable, then you could be taken advantage of. If you're known to monitor, 
then you're going to spend money monitoring and the worker is going to work. Or if you choose not to monitor, then what's going to happen is you're going to lose money because your work won't be done and the worker will make out by not working very hard. So the, the strategy in this case is to be random so that the other party cannot anticipate your move and therefore keep it um, mixed or randomized. The other application of a one-shot game is Nash bargaining. And this is where we have example here being of labor versus management, where management may have $100 to, to use by way of incentives. It can keep it and make more profit, but it, it could go as much as 100 in concessions. So the choices are, should management offer 0, 50, or 100? And we see that there are actually three Nash equilibrium points. At this point, at 0 and 100, if um, the union said, oh, can I improve my position by going to 50? No, they can't because in this case, they're getting 100 anyway. In this case, if management says, can I go to 100 or, or 50? And the answer is no, because we would lose money because we'd be a deadlock with high cost. So each of these three positions are Nash equilibria. In this case, we have three equilibria. And what would happen? Well, the common solution, as you know, is to go 50-50. And it explains part of the reason why that is the best choice, because at that point, that is a point where we use all the $100 and management cannot improve its position by going zero or 100. And likewise, the union gets $50 and they would lose if they go off from zero to 100. In this case, we have three equilibrium, but as a practical matter, we know what's gonna happen, 50-50.